was a very young man, I traveled to New York City. I moved to New York City on my 21st birthday. Packed all my stuff in a bunch of boxes, taped them up, and um, put everything I owned on a plane. a girlfriend in New York uh, whom I had met in Santa Fe uh, and who you know I had was kind of a childhood sweetheart um, <clears throat> she was a little younger than me a couple of years two or three years younger than me and uh, Incredibly beautiful. All the guys in town envied me because <laughs> she was so beautiful. Um, and um, she moved to New York. And I was miserable. I remember just, you know, crying in my beer all the time. And, you know, I'm kind of a romantic. I mean, when I get hooked, I'm hooked. And I just can't, uh, you know, I... Uh, when I become attached, it's hard for me to let go, I guess. And... Um, so I proposed marriage to her on the phone from Santa Fe to New York long distance and uh, she said yes and I flew to New York uh, to be with her and we got a little apartment in Brooklyn we got lucky and we, we got one right in Brooklyn Heights just a uh, block block and a half, two blocks from the promenade. We were um, right between Cranberry and Orange Street on, I can't remember the name of the street we lived on, but it was right between Cranberry and Orange Avenue. And uh, I lived in New York for um, about a year, I guess. Not, not in Brooklyn all the time because we split up after about six months and um, I wound up moving out of that apartment in Brooklyn and moving into the city and uh, living there. I had a really hard time in New York at first. Uh, there was, um, I went, must have gone through four or five jobs that first six months. Uh, couldn't quite make anything shake out. Uh, worked as a courier. Uh, worked as a mechanic's apprentice. Mechanic meaning we would, we would go up to these big fancy apartments um, like on Park Avenue and stuff and uh, repair their tile work or uh, do some plastering once in a while we'd go in and do some demolition work, go into an apartment on the 80th floor and tear out all the walls and stuff. Uh, but none of that panned out very well for me. Um, <laughs> also worked in a bagelry uh, and deli. Uh, and in, in Brooklyn, which wasn't far from my apartment, which would sound ideal, but it didn't pay very well. 
and I uh, finally got a job working in a warehouse. Uh, we were a prop house. We rented props for soap operas and movies, things like that, Sesame Street, uh, Days of Our Lives. And uh, so I worked in the warehouse. We would, we operated this freight elevator. We would load it up with uh, furniture and other kinds of uh, set props and things like that and take them down and load them in a truck. an adventure living in New York City and after a year of that I decided that uh, I missed New Mexico and uh, I had a better life in New Mexico so I came back to New Mexico after being gone for a year Disinfected my whole truck. <laughs> <laughs> All righty now. Let's see here. Oh, I'm hungry, man. What about you? Snacked on some veggies when I was making my dad's salad. But yeah, definitely ready to put some lunch. What do you think we should do for lunch? Chili sounds good. One of the biggest contributors to the spread is uh, people eating in restaurants, mm -hmm. uh, in bars, kids in school, uh, people who travel, uh, and religious people uh, seem to be all some of the biggest, <coughs> the biggest uh, places where you get the the worst spread. And the biggest number of deaths. Uh, no, well, that's one reason I was freaked out to see Kenny because fucking Texas is off the hook at the moment. Uh, yeah, and but so is New Mexico. So not as bad as Texas. Texas yeah, is I all mean, like southern New Mexico. Dude, Santa Fe County is over like it's at, at or above three percent infection rate, which means. What, you know what that means is that one person goes up to three people. Exactly. Exactly. One more. One more. No, the dude that so, came out there was this lady. They um, apparently had been infected for like 70 days and been shedding. Oh, yeah. Virus. Okay. She'd go all over the place. You because know. she didn't show any symptoms. Right. That's just what's horrifying about this thing. And uh, she might have even worn a mask, but that doesn't necessarily mean, you know, you're not infecting people. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, I, uh, part of the reason why I've been just kind of staying home mostly is because, like, I don't know, I feel kind of safe going north, like, out of Santa Fe, because, like, as you know, there's fewer cases, like, around you than there are around me. Yeah. 
but I get nervous because of the, she's a teenager and kids, you know, rub um, elbows with other teenagers and stuff. And she's only been hanging out with one person. And you told me she took a trip on the plane. Uh, yeah. No, she got to her. one of the worst infected places. She got her, she got her test back. She was oh, that's good. Oh, that's good. Um, that relieves me quite a bit, actually. She took the test uh, a week ago. So that helps a lot. Uh, which doesn't necessarily mean anything either, right? Because the tests but, are supposedly like eighty-five to ninety percent positive. Uh, but I mean, even if you did test negative, you could still have it and it not show up on the test for. That's what I was saying. Is this, they're not. 100%. Yeah, yeah. So, but, you know, in general, it does kind of give you some relief. It makes you feel like, well, okay, yeah. Uh, maybe the teenager's okay. <laughs> but, you know, people are sending their kids back to schools and stuff. And, uh, which I think is a really bad idea. Oh, uh, yeah, no, I told you. Uh, I think they, all of what our they schools did is they, uh, should be online now. Oh, completely, yeah. Uh, they did a survey of the parents and I basically put down, I don't want her going back to school until it's under a 1% testing rate. There's no reason why the government shouldn't make school free and make it all available online and all the way up through college. Yeah, like, uh, there's no reason why they couldn't do it all the way up to a BA, you know? I, I could understand why to give somebody a PhD, you might want to test them in person, and yeah. there's certain things that you might have to do in person. El Tao Senior? I don't know, we need to get something to go, right? Like, yeah. uh, like a burrito place or something. The Chinese place, maybe they have to go. Or did they look all closed up? No, I was talking about there was a Mexican place back there that looked like, looked like it did to go, but there was fucking the parking lot was packed. I was like, oh, great. Oh, <laughs> you know it's good, but. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, it is also, also basically the. The lunch hour is approaching. Nice beams. Yeah. I was thinking that too. Those are some nice chunks of wood there. To go. They say to go. Oh, really? Let's go get some. Some egg rolls. Yeah. Let's. Some egg rolls and some gum pow tofu. Black bean sauce. Oh yeah, some mapo tofu would be good. Down for that. I'd rather have Next that. One. I'd rather have that than some chili. I guess we could just call the order in. This awesome New Mexico road that I always wanted to drive up, but never did because we were always in a hurry or we were driving too fast to stop or something. I didn't just have the time to kill. What is that up there? A box or something? Yeah, what is that? Mine, it looks like that's where the road goes to. What the hell? I gotta see if I can get a better. There we go, that way. What the hell is that thing? Whose driveway is this? It wasn't a mailbox or anything. No, no signage of any sort. Nothing that said to keep out, huh? Nope. 
hope we don't have to turn around. And we're in the National Monument, so... Yeah. Hopefully there is a place to turn around. Uh, it would be rough to have to back out of here. Be very slow. Yeah. Oh, these are some gnarly rocks. See, I don't want to bottom out either. Uh, ah, that's a little rough. It's kind of a little rougher than it looks. Mm hmm. like an old mine of some sort. I'll bet you're right. It's probably a road up to that mine right there. Mm -hmm. There's like enough room to turn around there at least. Gnarly. Right there there is? Looks like there was, yeah. Good, because this road looks hairball. We'd better not continue up it. Wow, look at that. What's that up that in the cliffs? It's hard to say. What a trip. Well, I'm willing to park it right here where you said we can turn around. Are you sure we can turn around here? Want me to get out and direct you? Uh, yeah, maybe that's a good idea. Yeah, keep going. You might hit a cactus, but it's not gonna hurt your truck. Yeah, just turn it. Yeah. Thank you. Harder. Like that? <laughs> Am I good? Yeah, still got room. Keep going. Okay, we're hitting the cactus now. Is it firm? How's that? Think I can get out of here? Oh yeah, no problem. I wonder how many people have been stuck here just lately. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a look at it. Wow. Yeah, you see the road goes all the way around there. Right. Even up farther past it. I've found a couple of roads like this here in the gorge, in this part of the gorge. And I'll bet the other one's of mine too. I didn't go to the top of it. You want to walk up the road a ways? This is an old abandoned road that is no longer maintained it's all washed out in places but it looks like it goes directly up to that mine whoa we'll have to be careful crossing this This is like break your ankle type of stuff. And cactus everywhere. Advanced hiking as they say. And we're back on the road. Weird. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Uh -uh. Oh, we've got to investigate this. What the hell? <laughs> Way out here, a street light. 
and steps. Uh, yeah. Maybe it's because it's the, this is the uh, National Monument. And they wanted to have a trail. <laughs> but they ran a power line all the way up here just to put that light there. It looks like it. They ran a power line all the way up here just so they could put a street light here. We got to go check this out. The. Oh, yep. The meter's gone. It looks defunct. The meter's gone, and it looks like the light is broken. The trail there is all washed out. Thought I was going to get some good B-roll of you climbing up the hip mountain here. <laughs> Instead, I just got you whining. Yeah. <laughs> cool rock. Really, you're going to let an old man with COPD beat you up the mountain? Well, I have to investigate a little further. Wait here for me. Have a cigarette or something. <laughs> All righty. I think we're just getting to the good part. There's a bench up here. And now I know why this trail is so well maintained. <laughs> and I say that loosely. But obviously, people use this trail pretty regularly. And, uh, This is a pretty nice spot. You can see why someone would want to come up here and just relax and take in the view. It's pretty cool up here. There's a bench. It's all about the view. Yeah. You'll be able to watch it later on my YouTube channel. The mine must be over there. What a view though.
Trail keeps going up further too. The trail goes way up further. I haven't found any treasure up here. There's horses down there though. Yeah, on a national monument, yeah. Huh? National monument, yeah. But uh, all these people are living here already, so are they subject to that? No, nah, they're grandfathered in. <laughs> oh, no, as long as they're on their own land and not national monument. That's why a lot of people were against it. Considered it a land grab. You know, there's been a lot of talk, a lot of rhetoric and stuff on Facebook about fascists and Nazis and stuff. And, uh, I don't think people really understand when they're using those kind of labels that uh, it's pretty hard to find somebody who identifies as an actual fascist or a Nazi in the United States. I mean, yeah, there are some small groups here and there, but in general, uh, Americans aren't like that. You know, I mean, this is like really tiny, tiny segment of the population. So people should be more aware when they're slinging around those kind of labels on people. Wow, look at that. I mean, that's just a beautiful green turquoise color there well, in the rock. We're probably only about five miles from the epitome mine. Oh, what's this right here? Lichen. No? Mica? I guess. 
Yeah, I guess it's mica that's kind of... Mica. They are, they're huge. Huh. Well, must have come right out of the hill here. Yeah. There's the truck all the way down there. Can you see it? Yes, it's beginning to rain. I'm getting a few drops of rain on the rocks here. You can see them pretty well. I'm grateful. We need the moisture. We always need the moisture in New Mexico. So we never complain about the rain. Oh wow, that's a nice piece of cedar right there. Look at that piece of cedar. Major. Some tall growing sage. Big old patch of it. Yeah, it must have been fun being an old cowboy miner up here. Come up here and dig in the mountain all day. Hauling down some rocks. Big deer. That looks like a good climb. Huh? So that looks like a good climb up there. It's a pretty major peak there. Oh, that one. Cliff. That'd be a good climb up there. I'm like, if I was the miner dude, I'd have a little house over there. We should have hiked up to that, to that uh, sluice box or whatever it is. Next time. Yeah. We went basically that far, but we just went around the edge. Yeah, we could have climbed up to that sluice box. I still think there's road back there. Well, obviously they had a road that went up to where the pole is, the the power line. Yeah, I can see it. I can see the road. That's probably the road that your truck's on. Oh yeah, you're probably right.
I was told this is San Pedro cactus. Whatever it is, it's delicious, the fruit off it. It's yummy. Tastes like strawberries. Really? I didn't know that. We should eat it. Well, you're out of luck, aren't you? <laughs> uh huh. We'd have to eat a lot of it, huh? Maybe we could concentrate it. I'm trying to remember where I saw a few of them. I was planning on going back and digging them up. I think it was uh, when we took that drive found all those circles of rock and we climbed to the top of that little peak. I always find them on top of ridges. I remember we stopped to go to the bathroom and I found like three or four of them underneath a tree. And uh, put a little cairn, stone cairn, next to the road where they were. The next time we could come up with a shovel. I see another trail up there. Maybe it's a game trail. An animal trail. We do still have some animals in New Mexico. This road probably goes all the way back up in there. Mm -hmm. Look at that thing, it's still glowing up there on the side of the mountain, that little white thing. Mm -hmm. It's interesting to come over here with a telescope, with some really good binoculars. Can you zoom in on it? Climb up to it. I wish I had a better truck, man. I need something with four wheel drive and better clearance. Yeah, I need something with better clearance. What I want is one of those little Suzuki Jeeps. Yeah. Uh, but they're really hard to get and they're really expensive. What, do they make money more? Uh, no, they don't really. And, but they have them with like 400, 500,000 miles on them and they're still running fine. Yeah, well, man, I'll tell you what, they built those Suzuki Jeeps right, man. They're, people have those Suzuki Jeeps that are still running from, like, the 90s. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Early 90s, too. Yeah. They've been around for a while, and a lot of them are still on the road, amazingly. Yeah, I remember uh, when the coat came out, there was a whole bunch of losses because they were flipping so often. Yeah, no cussing now, I'm recording. <laughs> Hold on to your cannolis. Definitely not a highly maintained road. <laughs> yeah, I know it's a little bit, a little bit off. Uh, I mean, it's not too bad. I just wish I had slightly better clearance. Trying to stay up on the crown of a road without going off the side. That's the worst of it. Yeah. We made it. Yeah, that's hard on your tie rods, and sometimes you can mess up a brake line or your exhaust system. Your muffler off. Yeah. 
Lost a lot of mufflers on New Mexico roads that way. And I swear these, there's like some old structures around here. They were channeling water or something. see a lot of rocks where you wouldn't expect to see rocks. Like, I think it's uh, ruins of an old Pueblo or something. Man, it's hot. I'm going to turn the AC on. Cool, huh? Mm -hmm. You're right, it's like right in the heart of a monument. Because there's a monument center right there. Yeah, that's why I think there was that light. The trailhead's probably right there. Oh, yeah, that's right. It looks like it. Yeah, definitely. I got it now. We just took it from the other direction. Right. People down there are fishing. Fishing on the National Monument. Uh oh. Better have a permit. Yeah. There are meters in the river. There's some kind of easements for the river. I don't know what it's all about. Maybe that was a quartzite mine. That's where they named that. Quartzite. Probably so. That's probably what we're looking at was Quartzite. <coughs> oh, look at this guy. He's got balls. I think it's very naive to believe in uh, free will, but uh, also just the idea of a big boulder, you know, a giant boulder rolling down mm -hmm. the mountain. Or fucking solar flare taking out the planet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. A solar flare. Uh huh. Uh, or a nearby star going supernova. Or a meteor. Yeah, or something even bigger than that that we don't even know about. Some giant cosmic wave or something that yeah, yeah. we don't even know about. Some shock wave that's been traveling for... <laughs> Who knows? That's what I mean. It's like there's, years. there's always a bigger monster on the horizon. And so, I mean, that pretty much negates any... We can't choose when we're going to die. We don't know can never know. You must kill yourself. <laughs> um, even then, you know, you might make a mistake. Uh, but how do you know, like, um, what were the, what were the circumstances that led you to kill yourself? In other words, everyone who kills himself, kills himself for a reason, because they're unhappy for so, um, some specific set of circumstances that they have no control over. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's your environment and the circumstances of your existence that lead you to do what you do. So making the choice to commit suicide might feel like a choice, but really you would be being driven by external yes exigent circumstances exactly 
I guess. Some people choose to do that, but are they really making a choice? I don't think so. I think they're just doing what their nature drives them to do based on the experiences they've had. Mm -hmm. Again, it always comes down to that, you know. Um, when you're living in the woods, you're not living... independent of the influences of your environment if anything it's the other way around like when you're living in the wilderness you are uh, your environment totally dictates your survival you know and your ability to exist in that environment and then there's bears yeah. <laughs> your experience and uh, you know the, your natural uh, talents uh, is all you have right Well, it's in different places too. You know, if you're in you know, a big forest, you can make a log cabin. You'd have to go up pretty high in elevation to get to the big logs in New Mexico. Yeah, one could survive in the wilderness. Uh, I've done it. I lived just somewhere in Alaska. We were pretty independent. I mean, we brought a lot of sugar with us. We had sugar and flour and coffee and we had salt and pepper and things like that. Um, we had sleeping bags and gear, you know, um, to survive. Tools. We had weapons. We had guns. Uh, and we managed to survive pretty comfortably all summer spring, summer, and part of the fall in Alaska. Um, but that ain't an easy existence. I mean, that's mm -hmm. that's pretty hard work, actually. And you, you really do have to kind of know what you're doing. Yeah. You gotta have enough wood. You gotta have enough fresh water sources. Yeah. I mean, you figure it out pretty fast. Most people do. I mean, we do have that natural instinct, I think, to survive. How to build a shelter in the summertime so you don't freeze your ass off in the winter? <laughs> yeah. I'm glad we didn't have to stay there in the winter. It would have been miserable. God. Yeah. <laughs> it's really cold. Months where it doesn't get above zero. Yeah, and the sun hardly ever comes up. Yeah. When it does, it doesn't come up for very long. And uh, <coughs> cold. Yeah, very, very cold. Dark and cold. 